Hello everybody, my name of course is Cashy Cans and welcome back to the Dank Cast. So first things first, it's been like a month since like the last episode, but I don't know if anyone was actually expecting any consistency from me. If you were, then you got me mistaken, unfortunately, my friend. But I would like to first off say I've just woken up, so the hair's hella messy and it, it, it is what it is, so deal with it. Most of you aren't even watching, you're just listening, so I thought it wouldn't even matter anyway. Thank you for all the support on the last episode. That shit was crazy, bro. I don't care about the views, like, I don't care about the actual, like, view count on the, the video, but I give a fuck about how many of those viewers, like, were actually, uh, I don't want to use the word impacted, because it makes me sound like I'm a fucking, like, motivational speaker or something, but, like, how many of those people that listened to the, the, the podcast actually, you know, listened to the whole thing and enjoyed it and took it in, and there was a lot of comments, so, thank you for leaving your comment on the last one. I don't think I even got to reply to all of them, which I probably should have because I'm a terrible YouTuber, but I did reply to a lot of them. So thank you all so much for the comments on the last one. Okay, so if you don't know who I am, my name's Kashi, nice to meet you. Uh, I started streaming when I was very young. I don't even have an age. I believe I first attempted to stream when I was like eight or nine, but I really picked up streaming when I was like 11. Started streaming Clash of Clans that eventually moved to COD Zombies. Um, where I actually started to learn a bit more about streaming. I then moved to Fortnite and was able to rack up like 5 to 10k subs streaming Fortnite on YouTube. And now currently, I'm pushing myself in the Crunker category on Twitch. <clears throat> and I'm doing my best to become one of the biggest streamers over there. So that's who I am. That's what I'm on at the minute. I stream basically every single day. And I make YouTube videos like in between when I can. Um, but there's a few things that we want to talk about today. Um, the first one is the week break I took and the drops that preceded or were before the one week break that I took. So, Crunker Drops. Jesus, man. What do I have to say about this? So if you don't know what Crunker Drops are, basically, um, the way they done it last month is that if you're a streamer for Crunker, you could get a skin made and they would have it put in the game and then that skin would be on your stream and the only way people can get that skin is if they watch your stream for four hours. Now, it sounds like a pretty simple concept, but drops always just absolutely blows up the crunker category and everyone just makes the most of it. Um, we, we saw streamers hitting thousands of viewers, including myself, baby. So it's definitely a lovely time. Everyone enjoys getting extra viewers on drops, although they all disappear at the end of the day. I think what a lot of crunker streamers miss with drops, like they miss the entire point. Like I see a lot of crunker streamers, what they'll do is they'll farm drops. And hey, you wanna farm drops, you do that. But what I mean by farm drops is they'll have an influx of these new like 2000 live viewers, which is so much. That for live viewership, especially on Crunker, if you get like 2,000, that's insane. But what a lot of people do, they'll run ads, they'll run sub goals, they'll run giveaways, they'll run, they'll, like, they'll try to get all the follows on their Twitter. And I don't blame them for that. But I feel like the one thing that people miss out on the most is like bringing the viewer back. Because, yeah, you could, like, you got to remember why they came to your stream. They didn't come to your stream because they want to watch you play Crunker. They came to your stream because they want your item. Now, the, the game there is to take them from a viewer that wants to watch your stream for the item. Now, if they haven't already clicked off and muted the, the stream in the first 30 seconds, you're already winning. This is where you grab them. This is what nobody seems to do. Everyone wants to, like monetize this new audience and like drag them somewhere else but what i'm focused on when the crunker twitch drops come out is how do i get all of these motherfuckers to come back like isn't that the only thing like you should be worried about on twitch I f or maybe not the only but definitely the first as i said i mean i'm a very small streamer i i stream crunker so if there's anything you disagree with in this video, dude, leave a comment. I'll respond. I, I'm completely open to having any of my um, opinions disagreed with. If you, if you can prove me wrong, then prove me wrong. But the way I see it, <clears throat> and the way I've always uh, profited off drops, is trying to... It sounds stupid, and it sounds simple, but trying to create engaging enough content so that the people that come over from drops will then return the next day when I go live. Now, that is the game right there. If any of Crunker streamers are listening, um, stop farming ads, stop farming subs, stop farming Twitter follows, and start farming some original fucking content to bring those bitches back. Because, I mean, yeah, 
a couple hundred extra Twitter followers, few thousand extra Twitch followers, but like, can you get them to return? That is the game. That is the game. That's it. Can you get those motherfuckers to come back? And in most cases, in most cases, it's like a 5% um, like retention. Um, at least for, the, well, for the first week, it's usually like 10 to 15. Um, so we'll see streamers that have like 2k viewers. Um, then they'll come back the week after drops and they'll, they'll have like 150, 200, like maybe like, I, I don't know why I said five to 10%. I mean, like they'll be back down like five to 10%, if that makes sense. So like if they were at 2000, they go back to like 50 or a hundred, which is what most crunker streamers sit at. Um, but like usually, I don't know there's an exact number of people that will have to stick around for drops, but it's a very small number. But the, but even though it's a very small number compared to like the amount of drops that came from, or the amount of viewers that came from drops, it is still like a significant boost from if you were just streaming naturally. So that's what I want to share about drops. I feel like people just do it wrong, but again, there's no wrong way to do it. As long as you're having fun, you're doing it the best way possible anyway. So have a fucking great time. Um, drops is always good. Anyone that got my Pepe slippers, congratulations. You're one of 10,000. No one else will ever be able to get them. I'm so thankful, man. Do you know how... Do you know how cool it feels to have a skin in Krunker? Like, genuinely. Like, imagine a game you play every day. Like, imagine a game you play every day, and you start making videos for that game and streaming that game, and then the developers of that game give you a fucking skin in it. D hey, I love it. I love it. All right. So that was Krunker Drops. Um, shortly after Krunker Drops, I actually had to take a week break. I... <sighs> I actually choke drops hard. I'm actually not going to move on to the week break yet because this actually still applies. So, dude, drops came out. And before drops are coming out, it was what I was looking to, forward to the most because I knew it was going to be the biggest opportunity for my Twitch channel. Um, so I was ready. Drops came out. It was like, it was like stupid early in the morning. It was like 5 a.m. I had been up all night, but I said, I don't care. But here we go. Chugged coffee. RGB lights on, got the good music going, we started raving, and uh, off we went, ladies and gentlemen. I streamed 14 hours the first day, 12 hours the next, 10 the day after that, 8 the day after that, missed a day, done 6, missed a day. And I really, really, really messed myself up hardcore because when I went way too hard on the first few days, I tired myself out way too much. I, I couldn't bring myself to want to stream anymore like i i was done dude like i i'm not someone that do, does the long streams like especially even recently i've actually cut my streams down in um uh length so that i can do content on stream and then end the stream and then i'm not too tired after so that i can edit the video that i made on stream i feel like that's just like an amazing process um it's it's going to be part of like the youtube consistency that we're going to go over in a little bit but I really, really messed up my mental with drops. And the thing was, it was so upsetting because we wait so long for these kind of events. Like we wait months and months for these events. And I had so long to like get myself prepared. And I thought I was ready because I felt great. Like the first few days, it was, bro, the first day of drops was phenomenal, man. I don't remember what the viewers were because nowadays I don't even look at my view account because I don't really care. Um, but I just remember it just being a huge day, man. Um, so hopefully when drops come back next, next time around, we can actually stay consistent and not fall off towards the end. But I have to say the like missing streams, I think I even missed two days at the end. I might not have even done the six hour stream. It might have even been less than that, but I know that I really fucked myself up. Um, and it took, a, it took like a, like a heavy hit on my mental. Um, <clears throat> I'm someone that um like when i came into streaming crunker i wanted to be top of crunker no questions asked so what do you have to do to do that well you have to do every fucking thing you fucking can <laughs> so i mean when i want something i do everything in my power to get it like everything i want to grow on twitch okay then we stream 12 hours of drops but when i can't do that when i when i when i am tired as fuck or like whatever is getting in the way of it when i can't 
do the things that I know that I'm capable of doing, it it takes a really heavy hit on my mental. Um, and for for a few weeks after that, I was like pretty down because my like I didn't really have much content running um, after drops, so I didn't really have like much leverage to keep those people coming back. Um, because honestly, the ideas were kind of low. I go through like different idea stages. Sometimes I have a lot, sometimes I have a little, but I, the ideas were low. I was getting a little bit lazy. I threw the last few days of drops. I was just feeling terrible about myself and, and, and how I'd been treating my Twitch chat because they give so much to me. Um, and I just couldn't give it back. So what I did to fix this mental hit, to fix this content drought, I took a week break. Something I said that I never thought that I'd ever have to do. And the thing is, I didn't even take a week break from everything. All I did was just not stream for a week. I played Valorant every day and I uploaded uh, two or three videos. And that week break done a very nice, it just hit like a nice reset button on me, dude. So I came back with a clear head. I was able to think about where I want to take the YouTube channel. I was able to think about where I want to take the Twitch channel. Um, and I want to think, I, and I had time to think about like where I want to take myself in the future. So I'm going to fill you guys in with some of that. Um, the Twitch, I got asked this the other day, actually. Um, someone said, uh, what are my goals with Twitch this year? And honestly, being one of like the biggest cranker streamers, ho ho like no ego shit. If you think I'm being egotistical, um, okay, whatever. But like, it is what it is. Like I'm one of the biggest cranker streamers at this point. Um, so the growth on Twitch isn't really like a massive thing for, for me at the moment. So it is generally just like being able to give enough enjoyment to the viewer as much as I enjoy streaming, right? So I, I mean, I, I love streaming. <laughs> I think everybody knows it at this point. I've been doing it for years. My goal for Twitch at the moment is to get the viewer as engaged as possible and have them enjoy the stream more than I enjoy streaming it. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with Twitch at the moment. Um, so if, if that sounds like fun, twitch.tv forward slash cashy, maybe you should come say hello. But the goals of YouTube are much bigger. So I run two YouTube channels, um, Crunky Zen 1 and Cashy Cans. Crunky Zen 1 is a Crunk Clips channel. Cashy Cans is the video that you're watching this channel on right now. Or maybe you're listening over on Spotify. If so, hello. Thank you for listening to me on Spotify. I think that's kind of cool. Um, Anyway, but yeah, we run these channels. So the the goal in quotes is essentially to get them both to 100k. That's just how it is. Um, but obviously, it's not just like um, I want to get these to 100k. You have to like actually like think about the steps to get there. It's so like sometimes it's more than just like uploading videos to do that kind of growth. Um, but, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to upload a shit ton of videos. Uh, the YouTube consistency has been much better for me recently. As I said, I've been taking my streams a little bit differently now. So I've been doing shorter streams. We've been doing like a lot of content. So we'll do like a four hour stream, right? And this is usually how it looks. This is, this is, this is, by the way, I think this is like an amazing way to stream. Um, instead of just playing a game for 12 hours. But hey, this is just my way of doing things. Go live. First hour, we go through anything new uh, in the game, in the internet, in the anything. Maybe someone got a new dog, like anything. We'll just play some pub games, anything that's new. We'll talk about it. Um, we'll set up like what we're going to do later in the stream. So if there's a new update or a new map, then we'll get ready to check that out. And then hour two, we'll hop into whatever the new content is, if there even is any. If there's not, then I hopefully would have picked some for that day that we can do. Hour three, usually I, t I tend to like feel out what chat wants to do. And we'll try and do something like that. If they want to do customs, we'll do customs. Maybe I don't feel like doing what chat wants to do and we'll just do some trading. Or no, usually trading is the last hour of stream. But usually hour three is like more, um, a little bit more chilled than like hour two. Hour two is usually the content, content, content. But um, sometimes that can just come through to hour three as well. It just depends how like what we're doing and how we're do long we're doing it. But um, I just try and like do all the new shit. Like if any new custom maps come out that are like really innovative, innovative, then we play those. If there's any new, cr I love, dude, one thing I love doing on stream, I love reacting to Crunker YouTube content. I mean, one, because it's just like such easy content to make, but two, um, there's not a lot of Crunker YouTube content. Um, so when new people post Crunker content and it's actually good, it is so entertaining to watch, man. So I love watching uh, Crunker YouTube content. By the way, if any of this sounds entertaining to you, uh, link to my Twitch is in the description. You should definitely come through. But 
the goals with the YouTube channel is to consistently keep myself posting on Cranky's M1, which is very difficult, man. It is very difficult to find Cranker clips. Dude, I get shitted on so much for owning that channel. Dude, all you do is fucking steal clips, you fucking content gremlin, dude. But do you understand how fucking difficult it is some weeks to find clips, you mother bitches? If, dude, if it's so easy, can you, yo, listen, I, just fucking stream the game, dude. Some weeks, there'll only be like 50 people streaming the game total, and I'll have like, Seven clips, dude. I'm like, how am I gonna make a 10 minute video out of this? Let alone have a thumbnail and a title. So some weeks is really, really difficult to find Cranky's M1 videos to make. Um, on top of like the the crunk of viewership being low, I will talk about that because that is a very interesting topic that I want to get into. Um, and also the lack of clips. It just doesn't help. It's just it just makes things a little bit difficult. Um, so Crunky's M1 is doing its thing, 20k views a vid, 30, it's like, I think the average is like 25 to 32k views in the first week, so not bad. Um, and then over here it's more like 10k, I think. So the, the, the Kashi Kans YouTube channel used to be like rare uploads, like it used to almost be like Conixo fucking uploads, dude. Like we'd upload like once every like month sometimes, once every like couple of weeks. And, but when I did upload, like there were high effort videos. But recently, it's been more content, and honestly, I kind of like it this way. The the content gets less views um, per video, but then overall, I'm still getting way more views than I was before when I was uploading less videos. So I definitely think the more content route is the route that I want to take for this channel at the moment. Just continuously pushing out new stuff for you guys to enjoy and interact with, and hopefully, like the new people that have stopped by can get to know me a little bit better. Um, by the way, if you do ever want to talk to me, please, please, please. Um, Discord links in the description. My DMs get kind of flooded sometimes. So probably the best way is if you see me uh, online, at me in my server. That is probably the best way you can get in contact with me, like ever, like literally ever. Now a hundred million people are gonna go do this and now you're never gonna be able to do, fucking get in contact with me. But um, no, I always say this, like I don't get hit up that much. I'm not that fucking like big, but if you wanna like come and chat, the Discord is the place. Kashi's Dank Dungeon. Um, but if it's something personal, feel free to DM me. I'm just looking at my DMs now. We have a few. Um, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, we may take a day or two to reply to you. But uh, your DM will get replied to. Um, please don't. Dude, I always... See, I've never said this out loud. Because I I never want to sound like a cunt. But I, I, I mean, I reply to all my DMs, right? So, but people really need to, like, stop DMing me sometimes. And I think a lot of them are younger. And what it will be is, is like people will DM me to like talk to me, but they won't actually like try and even have a conversation with me. They're just messaging me for the sake of messaging me so that they can like show their friend or like just like, I don't know. They just, hi, Kashi. Hi, man. Hi. Look at like, look at this like completely like random thing that like I just definitely won't care about. Like, I don't know. I'm not, maybe I'm just a fucking dickhead, but. Sometimes I just get like loads of messages from people and it's just like hi 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 and they don't actually really ever say anything I'm like yo, what's up man? Everything okay? Oh, yeah, man. Hi, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that out there I never really wanted to voice my opinion on that because I feel like I make myself sound like a dickhead And I don't want to like scare anyone away from DMing me. So if you are gonna DM me DM me with a fucking purpose, okay? I don't care. It doesn't matter what the purpose is. It doesn't fucking matter. You could message me saying, uh, I need help. Uh, I have depression. Dude, we're, uh, I'll try my, I'm not very good with shit like that, but I'll help you. Or you can message me saying, Kashi, I need to know right now, what is your dog's name? And I'll tell you my dog's name. But if you're messaging me just for the sake of messaging me, get the fuck out of my DMs, dog. But, um, other than that, if you actually want to come and have a conversation with me, I'm fucking down because the motherfuckers that make what I do right now possible are the same ones that I should be giving all my energy and all my effort towards. I had a conversation about this with one of my IRL friends yesterday. He was like, why do you, why do you like respond to everyone? Like, why do you reply to all your DMs and why are you so interactive with your community? And I said to him, well, when I'm building like a brand and I'm building like a business in quotation marks, um, on Twitch. And it's a platform that's solely based around, like, interaction with the streamer, right? You stream, the streamer streams the game, uh, and reads the chat, and talks to the people in the chat, and it's like, an, it's like an interactive thing, right? And when I'm building a community based off that basis, 
like it only makes sense that I carry it everywhere else. So if you met like my Instagram DMs, I hate I hate replying to Instagram DMs because I, I don't like using Instagram. So I whenever I go on there, there's like so many. But Discord and shit, um, I just try to stay like as in contact with everybody as possible. Um because I think it's the best way to be. Like being in contact and being in the loop with your community um is definitely the best way to build a community like a lot of people say oh cash your community is so good um that you know they're so positive or like when we go raid people they're like oh my god like what the fuck there's so many fucking people it's because like i built i feel like i built a connection with a lot of these people now there are definitely loads and loads and loads of of people out there that are watching this right now that i've never spoke to and that's actually absolutely fine like some like you don't have to like i don't have to like like talk to everyone but i feel like the people that want to go out of their way to message me or want to go out their way to leave a comment on my video, I think I should go out my way to do that back. Now watch me just completely like never reply to any of these comments and then I'll just look like a massive fucking hypocrite and then you will unsubscribe. Damn it, dude! <laughs> so, um, one more thing I wanted to touch on the YouTube side of things is I've heard this for ages. Um, this, is, this is something I've heard for months now. Um, people that create crunker YouTube content tend to complain a lot. <laughs> They're like... Not, not, I'm not just about one thing, like, they just tend to complain in general, it just is what I've noticed a lot, like, a lot of people don't like taking responsibility, or they, they feel like because it worked before, it'll work now, or, like, it's just complete fucking ignorance, okay? Um, but, a lot of people have been saying that crunky YouTube views are down, and that's the reason that they're doing badly. Um, sure. I've been hearing this for, like, three or four months now. Uh, I, I would only say that I've seen a, a noticeable drop in my viewership in the past like month and that's because we're in such a fucking low point with Crunker right now Everyone thinks the game's dying y Yo, listen, if you think Crunker's dying Homie, put those three brain cells in your head together and just use them a second, okay? I want you to think back I want you to think back What was going on just before season 4 released? What was that? Oh, nothing? Nothing was happening? Oh wait, players were dropping? Content was slowing down? Views were dropping? Oh, wait. It's almost like right at the end of the season, there's less hype around the game. Maybe if we give it a month and season five and comp and ranked and all this fucking shit comes out, then maybe the player base will come back. I, I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Like, I'm really not concerned for this game at the moment. Like, I don't, I'm not with the concern. I'm not gonna, like, there's nothing, nothing about this game or its views or its its community or anything or, to me, screen that it's dying. None of that. Um, Sydney made an amazing announcement in Crunker Bunker yesterday, um, being really transparent with the community, saying, hey, we understand your, your grievances with the game, but we're changing this and this and this and this and this and adding this and adding this and adding this and fucking your mom and, and doing a backflip and like giving everyone a million dollars. So hopefully next season, all the changes will bring loads of beautiful people back to the block game that we play every single day, because if it does bring enough people, then maybe I can live off this shit one day, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the fucking goal right there, man. That is the fucking goal right there. Two YouTube plaques and a motherfucking house, baby. That's where we're going. <laughs> but um, we have bigger plans, of course, down the road. But for now, those are the short term. Um, I want to talk about a little bit of something personal. I don't want to fucking grow up. I really don't. Like, I've always, I've always, I've always thought like this. Maybe, maybe when I was really young, I think I wanted to be older, but like, as I actually turned into a teenager and thought about it, I do not want to at all. And I've noticed it's such a common, like, I wouldn't say fear, but it's such like a, um, like a, a shared, uh, not interest, like a shared thought process amongst a lot of people my age is that none of us want to fucking grow up. None of us want to fucking go and get jobs. None of us want to fucking go to the uni. I mean, some of us do. Like, I'm not. I'm generalizing here. Maybe, maybe that's just the people, kind of people I talk to. But like, a lot of people don't want to go and do these things that are like stereotypically like um, expected of us. Like, I know that I definitely do not want to go and work somewhere or have to have the responsibility of like paying for a house and shit. Like, I dude. The, the fear of growing up is actually fucking crazy to me, man, because it, like, I'm almost 18. I'm gonna be 18, like, 
in like f not even five months. Not even five months, man. I'm gonna be able to legally drink alcohol. Woo! I can't wait. I can't wait to have my first shot of alcohol when I turn 18. How, how exciting. I feel like I've gotten in such a spot of just sitting here and playing games every day and just making videos and streaming. And I feel like a lot of other people my age have gotten really comfortable with where they're at right now. And I feel like um, Corona definitely has contributed to that a lot because a lot of people have gotten very um, satisfied with where they're at and just happy to sit at home, play games, go out, see their friends and like don't really want to do too much. And honestly, I kind of feel that, man. I really don't want to have to get a job. I am going to finish up college in about a year now. And all I want to do out of college is just continue to do this. And I'm just a little bit scared because I don't know how possible that is going to be. And the thought of being forced to do something I don't want to do, it almost depresses me. Like, it, it almost, like... I don't know. It's like living living a life that like you don't want to live. Like imagine you're like a painter, dude, and you love painting and like you made your living from like making these amazing paintings, right? <clears throat> and then Gordon Ramsay just kidnaps you and just puts you in the back of his van. He's like, right, you're a cooker now. You cook for a living, right? That's kind of like what it feels like. Like all I want to do is focus on this shit. But then when I get older, I'm obviously going to have to go out and work at a place that... Dude. Now, anyone that's like over the age of 21 listening to this is probably laughing their ass off right now. Look at this fucking kid. He doesn't want to go out and work. Well, he's going to learn. He's going to learn the lessons of life. Maybe I am. Maybe I will learn the lessons of life and maybe I'll learn that it is required of me to go and work and put in my shift. But if I can find any possible opportunity or path or anything that leads me out of that fucking direction that everyone goes in, then God knows that I'm going to fucking take it because I do not want that life for myself. Do I want kids? I don't know. Um, don't know where that came from. We were just thinking about the future. Do I want kids? I don't fucking know. Um... <sighs> I think that's a lot. That's a, that, like that's a that's a lot. This was this was a short one. I feel like I got a lot into a short amount of time. So we had the we had the drops, st very stressful. Can't wait for the next. We had the week break, destroyed my mentality, but I fixed it. Um, we got the YouTube consistency, and then we also talked a little bit about the fear of growing up. This feels a little bit short, but I feel like we're still going to end it here, ladies and gentlemen, because that is all that I had to discuss today. So thank you all so much for listening. I'd like you to leave a comment and let me know what your favorite part of the discussion was this week. You may see another episode next week. You may see another episode in a month. But thank you all so much to everybody that listens to these. Really, really cool that you guys fuck with my podcast. Because this is so personal. Like This is so just like organic, sit down and just talk how I'm feeling. And people still want to watch that shit. Hell yeah, man. All right, boys. That's been about it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Um, come watch the Twitch sometime. I go live every day. For, well, not Mondays and Thursdays, but four o'clock UK time. Come watch the Twitch. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.